Amen. And I promise y'all. <laughs> And I promise y'all, I'm trying to get us out of here. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and take your seat. Amen and amen. First of all, I thank God, my Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is Lord of my life. Amen. Pastor, I thank you always, sir, for the opportunity to get up here and share what God's put on my heart. I thank my lovely wife. Thank you for all of your help. You've been good. Uh, God bless you. I love you. And uh, to this congregation, I say God bless you. Uh, God has a word for us today. And uh, I got a little bit, so I'm going I'm to try to get through this. So if you will, if you want to write down for a title, you can write down joy in the midst of trials. Joy in the midst of a trial. How many of y'all know that you can still rejoice in the midst of the trial? I don't care how bad it gets. I don't care how tough it seems. Amen. With God, you can still rejoice and be glad. Amen. Come on, let us have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you today, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. We give you glory. Father, I ask that you have your way, Father God. I pray for these people, Lord, that they came with an ear to hear today, that they came with a heart to receive what thus said the Lord. So, Father God, I just ask that you have your way, Father God. I pray that you would use your servant, Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me to say it right, Father God. And help the people, Lord God, to hear it right, Father God, that we would take this word, Lord, and we would plant it in our hearts and as a result we would be a better people father we thank you today we give you praise honor and glory all this we ask in the precious name of our lord jesus and we say amen and amen if you will go to james chapter one james the book of james chapter one i'm going to read verses one through twelve james chapter one i'm going to read verses one through twelve when you have that place say amen Amen. All right. It says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Let's transfer that, that word different, different temptations. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, wavering, nothing wavering, for he that wavered is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Verse 7, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. Verse 10, but the rich in that he is made low, because as the flowers of the grass, he shall pass away. Verse 11, for the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perish. So also shall the rich man fade away in, fade away in his ways. Verse 12 says, blessed is the man that endured temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Here James addresses and designates this letter to the, 12, to the 12 tribes of Israel, but ultimately was extended to all Christians everywhere, not just to the Jews, <clears throat> or, uh, but also to the Gentile and to the whole body of Christ. The message in James' letter is to encourage all believers to count 
or consider it joy when you fall into divers or different temptations or when you encounter various trials, tribulations, hard times, struggles, affliction, pain or suffering, insult and persecution, James says to count it all joy. See, not that it is joyful to go uh, through trials. Trials, are, it's not a joyful thing when you're going through a trial or you're suffering some. It's not a joyful thing, but he says, but count it joy. Why? Because of the spiritual benefits that our trials will produce when we endure. Can you say amen? The point is not to pretend to be happy, but when we face pain, but when we face uh, pain, we need to have a positive outlook. In other words, you don't have to focus on the trial itself. I'm not saying that you ignore it, but you don't have to focus on it, amen. We need to focus on God, amen. I submit to you, as believers, we must learn not to focus on the trial, but to focus on the joy that comes as a result of going through the trial. Well, the question I have today is what are some of the steps we can take? What are some of the steps we can take to keep our focus off the trial and on the joy in our trials? Our text suggests four steps we can take to keep our focus off of trials and on the joy in our trials. Number one, we can look past our trials, James 1, Four and two says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Now here's the kicker, verse three, knowing, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Then verse four, he says, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect, entire, complete, wanting nothing, hallelujah. In order to let patience have a perfect work, we must look past our trials and look to God. Amen. Counting the joy. Amen. Knowing that trials are a part of God's plan to part of God's plan to make you a better person. How many of y'all know that trials, when you go through, you're not looking at the trial, but you're keeping your focus on God because he's trying to make you a better person. Amen? It says counting, counting it all joy, knowing that the trials are designed to build you up and strengthen your faith. Amen. Count it all joy knowing that God is at work to bring you to a place of spiritual maturity and greatness. Amen. Don't murmur. Don't complain about situations and circumstances in your life. But what? Count it joy. Amen. Knowing what? That God is at work. Listen. Producing in you. Producing in you that spiritual fruit called patience. How many of y'all know patience is a spiritual fruit? Amen. Amen. In 1 Peter chapter 20, or let me take that back, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 through 23, we have an example of how we are to respond to God and let patience have its perfect work in our trials. 1 Peter 2 and 20 says, for what credit is it? What credit is it if when you are beaten for your fault, you take it patient? You take it patiently. Well, I tell you, there is no credit in that. You get nothing out of that. When you suffering for doing wrong, then you just going to get punished for doing wrong. That doesn't please God. Amen. That doesn't honor God. But look what he says here. But he says, but when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commemorable before God. For this, for this, you were called. Now he's talking to believers. For this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. Hallelujah. See how many, the Bible said Christ went about doing good. He went about everywhere doing good, but he suffered, you know, in that good. And then it says right here in verse 22, it says that we are to follow in his steps. 
who committed no sins, amen, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was revealed, he did not reveal in return. In other words, when Christ was insulted, amen, he didn't turn around and insult you back, amen. When he suffered, hallelujah, and we suffer. Now, it, you know, if we're disciples of Christ, if he suffered, amen, we're going to suffer too, amen. But he is our example. When he suffered, he did not threaten, amen. But he committed himself to the one who judges rightly. That's what we have to do. Amen. When you going through, and I know it's hard because our flesh ain't wanting to do that. See, our flesh don't like pain and suffering. See, but we're called to crucify this flesh. Amen. We're called to crucify it. Well, the apostle Peter goes on further to illustrate how married women should respond when they are suffering at the hand of their husband who does not obey God's word. And this is 1 Peter 3, 1 through 4. Please write this down. Look it up at your leisure. 1 Peter 3, 1 through 4. Wives, this is what he said. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husband. You mean when they are treating me contrary to the word of God, I'm still supposed to submit to them according to this? Yes. Amen. Crucify that flesh. Yes, submit. Because not only is your submission to your husband, but you're submitting to God first. That's why it says likewise. It says wives likewise. You know, in the same way Christ. It says wives likewise be submissive to your husbands that even if some, somewhat husbands, do not obey the word, they without a word. You got to get this. They, the husbands, without a word may be won by the conduct of the wife. That's saying you don't need to be up in their face nagging them, telling them what they ain't doing what they are doing, what they should be doing. You see what I'm saying? You don't need, and see, some of y'all may not want to hear that. But don't get mad at me. This is the word. This is the truth right here. You know, it ain't your words. This, see, you trying to win him. You know what I'm saying? And then you getting in his face and you're shaking your finger at him, telling him, oh, yeah, God know what you're doing to me. God sees what you're doing to me. And that's all right. God going to get you. God, and every dog's got his day. Come on now. See, see, that's that's wrong. That that that's not the right response. That's not the right attitude. But he says, he says, without a word, he says, you may the husband may be won by the conduct of the wife. Amen. It says, when they, they who the husbands observe your chaste. That means pure conduct accompanied by fear. They see you walking in line with God. They see a godly conduct, and they see you reverencing them in spite of themselves. That's what Jesus did. Jesus, you know, he, that's what Jesus did in spite of their faults. And this is what I'm saying. You got to look past that trial. You got to look past the suffering that you're going through. I know it's a painful thing because when our flesh suffer, we always want to retaliate. We want to pay back. But that's not what the word is telling you to do. Then he says in verse 3, he says, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. That's all good. I want my woman to look good. Amen. I want her to look her finest. But see, I got news for you. Outward beauty is fleeing. See, I want the inner beauty that's in her. And he says, verse 4, but rather let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. See, which is very precious in the sight of God. This is what God wants. And when you make it up in your mind, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to approach this situation with a quiet spirit. I'm going to do it God's way. God is pleased with you. See, that's you. That's you humbling yourself to God. That's you humbling yourself, wives, under the mighty hand of God. 
that he will exalt you in due time. All you got to do is do what God said. Now, let me tell you, it could take a long time. It could take a long time. But you can't stop. You know, you married him. And it could take a long time. See, y'all talking to somebody who struggled with drugs and alcohol for many years. But guess what? Mama prayed. She kept praying. She kept praying. She didn't stop. Now, look, she suffered that. All that mess that I was doing, Mama suffered through it. But guess what? She kept praying. You know, she endured the suffering. She kept, It's the same thing. You, you got a bad acting husband or whatever. You're going to have to suffer through. But if you do it God's way, stop focusing on your pain and your hurt. I, I'll say it again. You, you, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to crucify your flesh. That's all it is, too. But it pleases God. It pleases God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he gives a word to the husbands. He says, husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. And, and, being, and being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Ain't no sense in you praying to God you ain't treating your wife right. Ain't no sense in y'all praying if all y'all doing is you got this tension between you. You know what I'm saying? That ain't no good. God ain't hearing neither one of y'all's prayers because y'all not on one accord. You're not one on one accord. But what God says, because he says it in his word, he says if you have all against your brother, go to him or your sister go to him. Let's rectify this situation. Leave your gift at the altar because I'm not accepting it right now. Now y'all go and y'all get it right. Then you come and pray to me and then I'll answer the prayer. Husbands, we got to live right by our wives. We got to treat them right. Amen. We got to treat them. If you're going on a trip, you're going to give her the heavy luggage and you take the lightweight stuff. No, that's, that's not dealing with her as with understanding, you know. Uh, you, you know, here I have, me and Phyllis, we have fallen on some hardship, okay? But we're doing good. We do, we're not murmuring. We're not complaining. You know, uh, it's, uh, and it's hard time. And, you know, when we knew that we was going to have to endure this, the wife is talking about, well, I'll go get a second job. I say, no, you won't. I say, that ain't happening. I say, if anybody going to get another job and make things better, I'm going to be the one to do it. So I'm the one that's doing it. I'm the one that is to carry the load when it comes to my wife. But not only that, y'all, when it comes to helping out around the house and doing, ladies go through a lot, especially when you got kids. You know what? You need to get up, man, men. You need to get up and help out. Don't have your, your wife taking out the trash and mowing the grass. And don't have her doing that kind of stuff. That's your job. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let me get off of that. Let me get off of that. I hope y'all got that. Hebrews 12 and 2 tells us to look unto Jesus. Excuse me the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, Jesus looked beyond his suffering. Amen. He focused on the joy that would come as a result of going to the cross. Amen. The joy of being resurrected and ascended back to the Father. Amen. He, 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 would, he would enjoy, uh, he would have the joy, amen, of many being saved and inheriting the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus was looking for the joy that was, he wasn't focused on the trial. Amen. And so we shouldn't either. Excuse me. He is our example. Number two, not only are we to look past our trials, but we are to look for the potential for good in trials. How many of y'all know if you look for it, if you look, you'll find it. There is some good that will come out of a trial. Amen? James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If anyone 
or if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and he shall give it him. Amen. If you go to God and ask for wisdom, he's not going to scold you. He's not going to rebuke you. Again, trials, sufferings can last a long time. You might want to know what's going on. Amen. Instead of just suffering too and then just trying to work it out on your own, no, you better go to God and pray and ask God to show you what's going on in this trial. What is this suffering all about? Amen. He tells us to come to him. If you like wisdom, God says, come to me. Why? There are lessons to be learned in trial. And we need to go to God and say, Lord, what is the lesson I'm supposed to be learning here? You know, what is the lesson? You know, there are, there are changes that need to be made in us. How many of y'all know that? There are some changes that God is trying to make on the inside of us. Well, Romans 8, 28, 29, it says, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. Now, if you don't love God, this passage ain't for you. But if you love God, and the Bible says that Jesus said, if you love me, you obey me. That's what he said. It says, but it, it, it says to them who are the called according to his purpose. And everybody's been called to God's purpose, but not everybody else's. Not everybody answers. Everybody been called to his purpose, but not everybody answers. According to his purpose, in verse 29, it says, For whom he foreknew, he did also predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. How many of y'all know that that's what it's really all about? When it comes down to the pain, the suffering, the stress, the strain, all this stuff that God allows us to go through, it's to bring us to this place right here to be conformed to the image of his son. You know, the Bible said Jesus suffered. In fact, the Bible says Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. And if we're going to be like Jesus, guess what? We're going to suffer. Amen. And you better have a mind to crucify your flesh. The Bible tells us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. The flesh, don't, the flesh wants nothing but comfort, 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 comfort. That's all the flesh wants. See, God is trying to produce Christ's likeness in every one of us. And that's why he allowed trials and tribulations and all of this stuff that we go to. We need wisdom to understand what God is doing in trials. We, we can ask for the wisdom and receive it. God may be developing a new attitude in us through our trials. God may be activating some talent in us through our trials. Amen. God may be imparting wisdom through another person to you in your trial. See, don't deny the advice of God, especially these men and women here that's been married 30, 40 years. You younger married couples, you better listen to them. You know, you got some stuff going on to the house, you better come. Come talk to somebody. You know, I ain't there yet, but I'm getting, I can't write the book yet. <laughs> but, but I'm getting there, praise God. Amen. We should always look for the potential for good in our trials. But more than that, number three, we can look for the power of prayer in our trials. Amen. Look for the power. You know, if you're praying, you asking. Expect God. You know, go to him in confidence. Amen? See, uh, James chapter 1, verse 6 through 8 says, but let him ask in faith. If you go to God in prayer, go in faith. Go with confidence. Amen? See, go with boldness as well. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Yes. See, we are invited to ask for help in our trials. 
Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, 15 through 16 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. How many of y'all know Jesus didn't felt every pain, cranny, whatever you can go through? Jesus didn't felt it. You know what I'm saying? He experienced it. You know what I'm saying? But was, and it says, but was in all point tempted like we, but yet without sin. I believe many times Jesus was tempted to get into his flesh because he was hurting. You know, people, some people think, oh, well, he was God. He, well, he was, that's true. But he was fleshy. He was fully man, but he was fully God. And he suffered just like we do today. And he had trials and tribulations. And he was tempted, but without sin. Amen. Jesus did the will of the Father. And he did it perfectly. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Verse 16 says, let us therefore, see, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy to help find grace in time of need. How many of y'all know the grace is God's ability to help you get through the pain, to help you get through the suffering? That's why the Bible says, that's why in first in first Peter chapter 5, verse 5, it says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you when it's time. Okay? Because there's a place God trying to take you. And if you ain't ready, God exalts us when he knows that we're ready for that step. He's a loving father. You know what I'm saying? And so what we need to do is we need to cooperate with what God is doing. We need to know what he's doing, but then we need to cooperate with that. Amen. We need to keep, again, you know, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to crucify your flesh. Amen. But come boldly before his throne to receive his grace. And not only that, God says, count all your cares. Count all your cares on me, for I care for you. How many of y'all know? Can't nobody care for you like God. How many of y'all know that? He's creator. And you creature. No, nobody can care for you like God can. So whatever your cares are, cast them on the Lord. You don't have to carry it. But guess what? If you want to carry it, God will let you. He'll get out the way. And he'll let you do it. You know what I'm saying? You know? And so praise God. Amen. You don't have to. Grace. God gives grace. Grace to help is available in our trials. The grace is available in times of need. Amen. You just got to go to God. Go to God and ask him. Submit yourself. Humble yourself under that mighty hand and see what God do. Stop trying to do it yourself. Stop trying to control situations and circumstances. Stop, don't be trying to control your husband. You know what I'm saying? Husband, you, you ain't supposed to be trying to control your wife. Okay? She's your equal. You ain't more than her just because God says you the head of the household. You know? If you're going to be the head, be the head. But you need to let Jesus be your head. Because when you let Jesus be your head now, you're going to treat your wife accordingly. You stop being the head and let Jesus be your head. Then things will work out right. Y'all hear me? Amen. Let me move on. Okay. We look to the power of prayer in our trials, but last but not least, we can look to the prize that awaits after our trial. This is James chapter one, verse 12 says, blessed is the man, blessed is the man who persevere under trial. God says you're blessed for once he has been approved he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those, there it again, who love him. Hallelujah. God's crown of life is not glory and honor here on this earth. But the reward of eternal life, living with God forever. Now, eternal life, y'all, is more than just a mansion in heaven. 
is more than walking down the street paved with gold. This, this thing right here, this gift, this crown that God is talking about, it's the very nature of God. That's what God trying to put in you. Or that's what he's trying to grow up in you. His nature and his character. He wants you looking just like Jesus. How I many of y'all understand that? He wants us looking just like Jesus. All of our trials are temporary. You know, lately I've been working two jobs. Been working like a heathen. <laughs> ah, <laughs> been working for a while. Ah, but you know what? I'm like, you know, I ain't complaining. I ain't murmuring. I ain't complaining. I have said from day one, it's temporary. God's working it out. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm okay. Uh, you know, God will tell me, he'll let us know, you know what I'm saying, when I, can, <laughs> when I can let it go. But right now, that's how it is. And, and, I'm not, and I have no complaints, you know, about I got to do what I got to do. And y'all, three days out of a week, I'm working 16 hours. Three days out of the week, it's 16 hours, you know. And, uh, and so y'all keep me in your prayers. Because sometimes I'm on that highway and I'm, I leave a job at seven o'clock in the morning, and I'm at another job by 7.30 in the morning. So, y'all keep me in prayer. But amen, God is good. All our trials are temporary. We, we can all experience the joy that comes from God, even in our trials. For those of you who do not understand joy, let me define it for you. Joy is the happy state that results from knowing and serving God. Joy is the fruit of a righteous relationship with God. It is not something people can create by their own effort. <clears throat> Joy is a fruit of a spirit-filled life. Galatians 5.22 says, but the spirit produces what? Love, joy, peace, patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, last but not least, self-control. When a person walks with the Lord, that person can continue to rejoice, even when trouble comes. All you got to do is stay with the Lord. Walk to, listen at what God is telling you to do. This is what I will say to you. Get out of the way. Get in the word. Get your flesh out the way and get in the word. Do what the word says. Amen. You know, you want that situation to change in the household? Do what the word says. And I know that's tough because the flesh is saying no. I don't want to do that. I'm going to do it my way. Well, you'll struggle. And you'll never change it. At best, you'll run him off. You'll, you'll run him further away from you and God. Amen. When a person walks with the Lord, that person can continue to rejoice even when trouble comes. For those who trust in Jesus, the best is yet to come. In conclusion, let me leave this with you. In conclusion, we must look past our trials and look to God. Amen. We must look for the potential for good in our trials. If you look, God says, if you seek me, you'll find me. You know, when you're going through it, you know, get in the word. You know, let God speak to you in your situation. You know what I'm saying? Let God strengthen you. Let, it, let his word encourage you as you're going through that trial. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. We must look to the power of prayer in our trial. Pray. Amen. Amen. And when you pray, when you go to God, go in faith, not wavering. Amen. Go to God in confidence. Go to God in boldness. Amen. Amen. Number four, we must look to the prize that awaits us after our trial and be filled with joy. God bless you. I love you. Come on, stand to your feet. Amen. Hallelujah. If you here today, you heard the message, and I know everybody in here got some stuff that we're going through. You know, whatever you went through, I want you to come on, come to this altar. If you're here today, I want you to come to this altar. All of us have some trials.